Hi John, hey Jaguars and second graders. This is Miss Schooler and today for this week I want to begin talking about a new genre. I know you've been exploring a lot of poetry and let's look at our genre poster. If we can get that. There you go. So you can see a little bit of a glare there. But these are our literature genres, and we have talked about informational, those are the ones that have facts in them, biography, those are the books that are about real people, poetry, you've been doing a lot of poetry, your acrostic, haikus, and quaint, and today I want to begin exploring with you folklore. And what it says up there is folklore includes stories, myths, and fables that people told one another over the years. Later, the stories were written down. And the part, the kind of folklore we're going to talk about today are these kind of stories. This is a French word, and it says pourquoi. It feels like there's, you should say pourquois or something, but it's actually pronounced pourquoi, and it means why and or because and these are stories that were made up a long time ago because folk tales are made up a really long time ago and they were told before anyone ever wrote them down and these stories were told to explain how things got to be the way they are they were made up by the people who lived a really long time ago and they didn't know they didn't have the scientific knowledge and they made up stories to explain why the sun is up in the sky why the leopard has spots. This one is from the Native Americans who lived in South America and it's called How the Birds Change Their Feathers. A South American Indian folk tale and this is retold by Joanna Troughton because she didn't make up the story it was made up by the Native Americans but she is retelling it and I'm going to read it to you. She's also illustrated the story and she's used a lot of the, illust the designs of those Native American people. This was published in 1976 by um, Blackie and so we want to thank them for allowing us to use and read this story today. I'm going to turn this a little bit so you can see the pictures. In the old days, when men and animals spoke the same language, there lived a boy who loved to hunt birds. In those times, the birds were not brightly colored as they are today, but were white all over. The boy's mother warned him that no good would come of his cruel sport, but he paid her no heed. So here he is off with his bow and arrow, he's going off to hunt the birds. Well, when he was out hunting one day, he found some brightly colored stones lying at the river's edge. They were all the colors of the rainbow. The boy strung them together on a piece of twine to wear around his neck. But no sooner had he put the necklace on than a horrible change came over him. He began to swell. He swelled and he swelled and he spread and he spread and he stretched and he stretched until he wasn't a boy any longer, but a great water snake with a skin that was all the colors of the rainbow. The rainbow snake lived deep in the down in the river, coiled around the trunk of a river tree. And when it was hungry, it swam and slithered to the surface and waited for its prey to pass by. Every creature lived in fear. The chief of the Indians called all the animals together. Whoever kills the rainbow snake may keep the skin as a reward, he declared. Oh, there was much brave talk, but one by one, each animal made an excuse. 
And we can see that these are all animals that are native to South America. Some of the animals' excuses. I've got a bone in my foot. I feel sick. I fight upon land as a rule. I'm too tired. I don't like getting water in my ears. I haven't had supper yet. I'm not strong. I don't like snakes. I have a wife and six children at home. I'm too slow. I'm too young to die. I'm too scared. I'm too small. It's too soon after breakfast. I can't swim. I'm only awake at night. I've got a sore throat. The howler monkey is saying he has a sore throat. Then the cormorant spoke up. I'll try, he said. Since I'm a diver, I have the best chance. Then he took an arrow in his beak and he de dived deep into the river. Down and down he went until he saw before him the rainbow snake lying coiled around the river tree. Straight at its throat the cormorant swam. The snake woke with a hiss. It lifted its great head, twisting and squirming this way and that. But it was all in vain, for the arrow met its mark and soon the snake was dead. The Indians and the animals dragged the body ashore. Then they skinned it. I claim the skin as my reward, said the cormorant. The chief of the Indians laughed to himself. He too wanted the beautiful skin and he thought he could trick the brave cormorant out of his prize. Take it, he said, if you can carry it away. And all the animals began to laugh too. And here they are, they're all laughing. That I will said the cormorant, and he lifted his head and gave a call. At first there was silence, but suddenly the air was filled with the beating of wings. Birds of the forest, cried the cormorant, help me to carry away the skin of the rainbow snake. And from every direction came the birds, twittering and tweeting, screeching and squawking. Down they swooped. and taking the skin in their beaks, up they flew again. The cormorant flew at the head, and the rainbow snake, like a banner, went streaming across the sky. And when the birds reached a safe place, the cormorant began to share out the skin. Let each bird keep the part he has carried, he said. And this the birds did. And then, a strange thing happened. The bird's feathers began to change. Birds who carried a red and green piece became red and green themselves. Birds who carried a blue and yellow piece became blue and yellow. All the birds changed their feathers until they became the colors they are today. The cormorant was not as brightly colored as the others, for he had carried the head, which was mainly black. 
but he didn't mind. For an old diver it does very well, he said. The Indians were angry. From that day to this, they have hunted the birds and have stolen their feathers. And that is the story of how the birds change their feathers. And now you can tell why this is a poor claw story. Because it's telling how the birds got all the different colors. Is it true? No. It is not a true story. Folk tales are not true. They are stories that are made up. But the important things to remember is that they were made up a really long time ago, so we don't know who first made them up, and they were told. This is a story that the um, elders of the village or community would have told the young people of the community. And then someone would have grown up and they would have told their kids and they would have told their kids and it was passed down from one generation to the next. If you were really an eagle eye, you may have noticed that the rainbow snake is, this picture of the rainbow snake is, has, is actually in the library. You guys remember seeing this somewhere in the library? Yep, it's on the ceiling over by where the new books are, where the round table is. Uh, one year, each of the students made a part of the snake and we put it up there. How the birds change their feathers, a poor qua story. Poor qua. We'll be sharing some more poor qua stories next week. Bye for now.